frozen glaciers disappeared and created Finland, a land of islands and lakes. The first people to settle this land built forests on these islands in the lakes. These forests led to the creation of Finland saunas, and the lakes left behind by the glaciers became a paradise for the people of Finland. The paradise continues west of Finland into the ocean. The Oland Islands. This place is heaven for navigators and a paradise on the ocean. It's a land where Sweden and Finland coexist. This is their land, the Oland Islands. Finland's location is where the Eastern world connects with Europe. Lying between Sweden and Russia, Finland has walked a road of suffering throughout its history. My final journey in Finland begins in a port city, Rauma. Rauma is the third oldest port city in Finland. It borders the Gulf of Bothnia, which connects Finland and Sweden together. The Gulf of Bothnia is the center of the city's residence. It is the place that holds Finland's maritime history. When the city was first built in the 15th century, fishermen made their earnings by catching seals and salmon. As part of the Scandinavian peninsula, it was an active port where sailboats from many different countries came and went until the late 19th century. The old part of the Rama still displays remnants of its more splendid days as a port city. Built with timber, this place embraces the maritime history worthy of being listed as World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It looked just like a scene out of a movie. All of the houses are built close together, like a village for little people. It looks like a museum, but 250 families live in 600 of these houses. What is this cabin-like structure in the center of town? This water pump was built in case of fires in a town filled with houses made of timber. It suited the town well. I decided to look for traces of Rauma as a port city. You can have a look at the window seals, yeah. and they have nice, nice items there. We always had sailors here in, the, in, in Rauma, yeah. and the sailors have taken also small souvenirs from other countries. The window shapes of the houses built with timber over 300 years ago are different. The decorations on the window sills catch my eye. In the past, the sailors were able to identify their homes by looking at the windows. The dogs with them from England, and in the old days, they said that when the dogs are looking out, like they are now, the seaman is out sailing, and when he comes back home, they turn the dogs the other way around so that they are looking inside. If we were living in the past, it would mean the man of this household is sailing right now. Ah. <laughs> but 
today they all seem to look out, so <laughs> you can't trust yeah. that. It seems the seaman traditions have faded a little bit, but I feel the traces of an old port city in its old scenery. In the old parts of the city, there is a tradition continued by the wives of the sailors. This place is a bobbin lace workshop. The lace looks very fancy. Bobbin lace came to Rauma in the early 18th century. In the early 1700s, lace decoration was very popular. The Roma sailors learned how to make lace during their stay in Europe. And they taught the skills they learned to their wives. Listine began making lace since she was seven years old. She is part of a family that has been making lace for three generations. She, her mother, and her maternal grandmother. Talvisaikaan merimiehet joutunut jäämään tuon keski-eurooppalaisiin satamiin, niin ei ole ollut jäämurta ja he ei päässyt sieltä pois, niin silloin heillä on ollut aikaa sieltä tutustua, siellä on nyplätty. 1600-luvun loppupuolella tai 1700 siinä vai, niissä vaiheissa se on tullut traumalle ja he on... How is bobbin lace made? This small stick that looks like club is the bobbin. I feel dizzy looking at her hands moving the bobbins. On the other hand, she could make lace with her eyes closed. It is getting complicated. However, the different lace designs are made using three basic patterns. I decided to travel back 300 years and pretend to be a sailor learning how to make lace. Yes, that's correct. Yes. A man who makes lace. It seems a bit unfitting. The four bobbins look like 40 bobbins to me. You are doing it twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel satisfied experiencing the old Rama that enjoyed more splendid days during the Middle Ages. That evening, I arrive in Turku, the first capital and the oldest city of Finland. In order to reach Oland, you have to catch a ride on the ship from Turku. The long line of cars waiting to get on the ship is not something I can see in a city. The ferry weighs about 4,800 tons. It can carry up to 2,800 passengers and 420 vehicles. Its scale is enormous. It reminds me of the Titanic. Finally, the ship heads to Oland. The ship that left Turku in southern Finland heads to the mouth of the Gulf of Botnia as it passes through the Baltic Sea. This is where the Paradise of Islands, the Oland Islands, is located in between Finland and Sweden.
southwest of Finland and north of the Baltic Sea, the Oland Islands located on the mouth of the Gulf of Bothnia. It is made up of 6,500 islands and was created by glaciers. The winter sea in Oland is peaceful like a lake. There are many log houses by the ocean, just like the lakeside. I come to find out that this is a place for anchoring boats. These are different lures used for fishing. We are looking at lures for the day. Lure. Lure, yeah. This is lure. What kind of fish you catch? This, for, this one is for, uh, for sea trout. Uh -huh. In the winter we use a lot of colors in it. Uh -huh. this is very the good. lures are not only colorful, but they come in many types. This one makes sounds. I wonder what kind of fish is this lure is used for. Fish is uh, salmon, 20.26. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know exactly, but maybe one meter, 23, something, one, something like this. He takes me to show me the salmon he caught. My biggest fish. Oh, it's a salmon, 20 point. Oh. It's a model from, from the original, but this is original. Okay. And uh, another is uh, Gibbs. And I catch with this lure. Yeah. It's a stuffed salmon, but I've never seen a salmon this big. It measures over one meter and 20 centimeters long. Will the Olin Sea show me some salmon? The boat speeds across the Gulf of Bothnia. There is salmon living in this calm sea. The boat heads more and more northwest. Oland is closer to Sweden than its mainland of Finland. However, the waterway is open. I feel as if I could touch the clouds if I reach out my hands. The clouds leave their shadows in the open waters between the two nations. I am lost in the scenery more than fishing. This time is, the, the water is uh, cold and there is very clear this area in, in Holland. So it's, maybe you can see the bottom from five meters, something right. like this. Yeah. But in the summertime it's more, more grass and, and so on, so not really clear. The sea and the island created by the last ice age. The glaciers created countless islands, and the ocean continues to move in silence. One hundred years back, I think it's one centimeter, the land is coming up. Someday, this spot I'm standing on could become an island. I pick a colorful lure. We throw our fishing lines into the sea. We try to catch the salmon by tightening and loosening the line that holds the colorful lures. I'll have to wait for a while. Sea trout goes like, you see there are big rocks under here because of the waves comes up there. So there is shallow water like one meter or something. I listen to the veteran fishermen and throw my line into the shallow area of the sea. Will I catch a fish? Oh, oh, oh my god, 
Oh. Take it slowly. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you oh. <laughs> you take it too hard. Oh. So. <laughs> 한 마리 잡는 줄 알았는데 방금 놓쳤습니다. 와. thousands and thousands of small, small islands that makes this archipelago very, very special. The view of the sunrise in Olin makes everything on the water look like a work of art. Even the waves are quiet. All the islands seem to have their own stories to tell. The sea, which has seen many boats come and go, seems to be catching its breath. Oland is heaven for sailors, and a place where many boats have come and gone. Even the islands in the distance probably had many boats come and go. The old uh, pilot station. Now it's clo close, and it, I think it's uh, the closest uh, 1974, something like this. I'm not sure, but it's a lovely place. It's a. Uh... Koba Klintar was a pilot station located southwestern part of Oland. We decided to stop for a little bit and take a closer look on the island. There has been a pilot station on Koba Klintar Island since 1862. The countless boats coming back and forth from the Gulf of Bothnia were able to sail safely because of this island. This island has over 100 years of maritime history and it played an important role. Boats continue to pass by this island. The east side is coming from, from uh, Finland, uh -huh. and there are other boats coming there from Stockholm, uh, very close here. Uh -huh. Finland was under the control of Sweden for 600 years. Now the two countries coexist on good terms. I want to see ships traveling between the two countries up close. This view will become a part of Finland's history. Whoa. Perhaps this is why this island is so special. All the pilots have gone, but in the summer the pilot station becomes a cafe, attracting many people on the island. I don't think there will be people on the island. But I see someone painting in the distance. What is he painting? The man who is painting the island did not say anything. The man is not a human. It is a statue of a painter. Perhaps it expresses the desire to capture the sea on this island. The image of the pilot who guarded this beautiful sea alone and the heart of the island that longs for the long gone pilot touched my heart. The boat begins to sail again, leaving Koba Klintar behind. 
not wanting this journey to end, the fishermen and I grab a hold of our fishing rods. Just then, we see someone fishing alone along the shore. He seems to have caught something. He carries the big fish back. I am green with envy. After returning to the island, I find the man who caught the fish. It looks to be over 50 centimeters in length. Sea trout. Sea trout. Yes, half serving in Swedish. Trout is a very common fish in Oland. I have two more to, to 2,000. That's why I'm out now. <laughs> yeah, fish. A lot of time. That afternoon, I am at the home of Ulf, whom I went fishing with. It looks like it's straight out of a picture on the shore. Ulf is making a smoked fish dish eaten in Oland to help me feel better about not catching any fish. It looks like grilled fish, but there is a secret in this container. It's for the, for the smoking, for the, for the color from the fish. It's good. Juniper is used to make smoked fish in Northern Europe. The scent penetrates into the fish, and it also changes the color of the fish when you smoke it. No, it's ready. Um, system is very simple things. Yeah. Somebody is uh, do it by self. It's like the Finnish people have yeah. sauna and the smoking, fish smoking. Here, the people who make smoked fish are men. They believe the fisherman who catches the fish know how to bring out the flavors. The color is changing to look tastier. It has to cook like this for one more hour. The smoked fish is finally ready. Doesn't it look good? Ulf has been waiting longer than I have. He pulls out a fork and knife from his pocket. If smoked salmon is a common dish we eat, smoked fish is a common dish people in Oland eat. Good. The scent is very strong, and the fish tastes excellent. Mm. <laughs> mm, lovely. <laughs> lovely. In the summer, it's very popular. In, when you maybe you have some potatoes salad and, and, and only this one, it's very lovely. And also when you eat outside. In the summer, this big yard will probably be filled with the island neighbors. Now, I'm headed to Sun, on the eastern edge of the main Olin Island. One of the five Finnish castles built during the Middle Ages is in Sun. Castleholm Castle was built in the 14th century, while Oland was under the rule of Sweden. 
The Swedish king was said to always stop by this castle when he traveled back and forth from Sweden and Finland. Uh, you see, Sweden and Finland was one country at this time during medieval times, and it was ruled from Sweden, and mm -hmm. Stockholm was the capital city, and Turku was the capital city of, of the Finnish part, or the eastern part. Between the 16th and 17th centuries, after the castle was damaged from war, it was restored. It was a vacation home for the king and the royal family, while Sweden ruled Oland. The castle no longer belongs to Sweden, it belongs to Oland, and it is open to the public. About 30 minutes away, Castleholm Castle. I come across a fortress in ruins. Bomard's Sun Fortress was built when Oland was under Russian rule to defend the land against Sweden. It was ruled by Sweden in the Middle Ages and ruled by Russia in the 19th century. After Finland's independence, Oland became a self-governing region of Finland. Oland wanted to become an independent nation In 1954, they made the Oland flag. In the paradise of the islands and in the sea lies the hidden history of Oland. Oland is an island that has more secrets the more I get to know it. That evening, I am invited to a party and I head to the island. It takes about 20 minutes by boat. There are many islands, so sailing at night is quite dangerous. After sailing through the dark sea waters, I arrive at a small island. During Christmas or New Year's, people in the town gather and enjoy a meal together. People in Oland become family through living in Oland. Before they begin eating, everyone drinks something. In Finnish, it's called glog, and in Swedish, it's called glogi. It's a traditional drink drunk in the winter. In glog, this is glog, you put this in. Yeah. The nuts in the drink make it special. If you drink it in the winter, it's supposed to help strengthen your energy. The residence party starts. Most of the food at the party are traditional Finnish and Swedish dishes called Janssen's Temptation. Traditional all on the 
this is uh, Swedish turnip and uh, potato, and this is very Finnish. The setup is like a buffet with a variety of dishes in one place. The Finnish dishes are incorporated into the Swedish traditional meal. If you come to Olin, you can enjoy foods from both countries. We have uh, the people from Olin have always been traveling around. And then you meet a lot of people from all over the world. And then you are more tolerant for other cultures. An old bottle is displayed on one side of the room. It's a relic that was salvaged from a Russian ship that sank in the Baltic Sea about 400 years ago. The Sea of Oland is silent, but inside it lives the hidden history of hundreds of years. The Baltic Sea spreads before my eyes. From the Arctic Ocean to the Baltic Sea, Finland sees me off with a strong wind. The wind of the Arctic and the wind of the Baltic Sea feel like a greeting sent to me by Finland's winter. I picture a white Baltic Sea in my mind. Finland. I will miss this land whenever the winter comes.